just uh, starting up. This is Howie Mandel does stuff. I'm Howie Mandel. And I am Jacqueline Schultz, your daughter, and... I'm Lou. Okay. His mic's not on. Hello. Mike's, uh, uh, Lou's mic isn't on. But Lou is here. Lou is here again. It sounds like his mic's on. It sounds like somebody's eating chips, but that sound is really Nurse Natasha. No, I don't... Is that... Hello. Hi. No, it is. Oh, it is. Can you? It is. <laughs> No, that was her. You keep doing what you're doing. We'll okay. we'll, we'll talk to you and explain. Check, 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 check. You don't have to keep saying check, but his mic isn't on. Well, then how will they know it's on if I... So let's just talk about what we're doing, and they'll work on the sound check of him. I love that people are in, involved in what's happening behind the scenes. The mishmash of everything, which I have to say I watched um, last week's, and it was a big mishmash, too. Well, but... this, this this we're taking more caution this time. That's why this young lady's here. Tell the people who she is. Okay, so this is actually my best friend, Natasha, that I've known forever. I know we've talked a lot about my past as a kid with you getting into trouble. This is who I did it with. This is Wait Natasha. a minute. <laughs> I'm just finding out that the trouble no. <laughs> was her idea. No, no, I wasn't the the bad influence. I was just I'm not a leader, I'm a follower. No, I was not the leader. Natasha. What? You're throwing her under the bus on saying. her own. Uh... I think I think there was a lot of people in our group that were definitely the leaders. Was I a follower? Okay. Um, I don't know. You're, <laughs> oh, I that means that Lou's mic is now working <laughs> in the middle of is it. Is my okay. mic working? Yeah. Yeah, we can okay. hear you perfectly. Okay. So Natasha um, uh, went to school and became a nurse. And not only has she become a nurse, you sound like Lou when he has chips. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. On the paper. No, <laughs> They're okay. my IV bags. <laughs> okay. So anyways, we talked a little bit about it last week. I know it went up on our podcast YouTube channel channel and everything how you passed out yeah we found out it was from dehydration mm -hmm. i told you you don't take care of yourself so i am going to take care of you and today i asked my friend natasha who is a registered nurse hmm. and oh, has God. her own business called YBL Medical. YBL Medical, mm -hmm. which I have used before. So mm -hmm. Natasha is also uh, very entrepreneurial. And Natasha mm -hmm. has this company where they go to the sets, mm -hmm. all the TV shows that you know, right. and she does all the testing. Wow. She comes to our house. Can we say what TV shows are we allowed to? Well, I think there's like a few that I'm allowed to talk about. Um, I think I'm allowed to talk about Teen Moms. And what? Vanderpump. Teen Moms. <laughs> she <laughs> takes show. a care of Teen Moms. I love that. That's and, uh, really. Van, Van 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 so you just do, uh, for Teen Moms, are you just doing the uh, COVID test or also do they I'm, pee on I'm a, a stick? I'm a set nurse and I'm uh, actually a baby nurse on set also. So we provide, <laughs> we provide that service too if you ever need a set nurse or COVID okay. compliance officer. I'm sure there's a lot of people that want a uh, set nurse. Let me write this down. No, but she does everything. Do you guys not have a for... COVID compliance officer on this show? It's on me. this show? <laughs> Lou. Okay. I'm the COVID compliance officer. Are we supposed to? I don't know. Now are you're we... making us nervous. Are, so we... are we supposed to have a COVID compliance officer? I, I could be your supervisor for the day. But what? But you're behind us. So <laughs> supervised from behind is kind of weird. How are you treating your dehydration, Howie? What are you doing? <laughs> So this, this so, is, and if you're in the LA area, uh, Natasha, you call, you call this, uh, um, what's the name of the company? YBL, YBL. Medical, yeah, Your so Best Life. it stands life. for Your Best Life Medical Group, mm. and we are a mobile medicine concierge service. So we come to the doorstep or workplace. Basically, any means medically that you need, we come to you. Try not to leave your house and go to urgent care and stand in line, get sick in those You don't places. do surgery, right? Well, my partner's a surgeon. Because I tried to open up a part-time brain surgery business. Uh -huh. right. I got to tell you, it's it's a lot harder than it sounds. Yeah, it's pretty, it's it's pretty competitive out there. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Her partner is a surgeon. Yeah. yeah. Well. So they are. So uh, my daughter, who's worried about me, doesn't trust that I'm going to be drinking enough water and yeah. taking my fluids. And if you read in the news okay. last week, so during the podcast, she invited Natasha here okay. to give me my fluids. That's a good idea. And eat. So also you're gonna eat. drink from your arm today. Oh, I'm gonna drink from my arm. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and but no propofol today for you. What is that? That's you're the Michael up Jackson. A tube? What are you? That's what the Michael you, Jackson drug. They're gonna inter. <laughs> called, yeah. They're gonna intravenousize you. And her. Wow, you guys are. We're a team. You know what I do? Instead of putting that thing up, what? drink a glass of fucking water is what I do. Uh huh. Picture. 
perfect picture of health. What is it called? You're a picture of health? Perfect? Picture perfect? You picture know, <laughs> if I may just say, last time I was on, mm -hmm. I was swearing a lot. Right. I was swearing, a, and the reason why I was swearing a lot, and this is absolutely true, is I've been to watch The Sopranos all seven seasons. Try to talk between the ripping of the IVs. I binge watched <laughs> The Sopranos all seven motherfucking seasons. Uh -huh. Right. So when I was talking during the podcast, I just start, I called the guy on the phone. I think a mother, dumb fucking motherfucker or something. So you're not going to use that kind of language well, in this I've episode? Been no, because I've been watching The Waltons. I binge watched The Waltons this week. Good night, Lou. Good night, John. It's Howie boy. <laughs> Good night, Jackie. Good night. Good night, Natasha. Good night. <laughs> I don't get it. So I'm. I know nobody It's out does. of my system. Nobody does. If we have a, a couple of older listeners, that's right. They'll kind of get it, it. It's never. It's Can you rip any more shit, uh, Natasha? Just I, keep ripping stuff. I have a lot of things to open. Oh, that's what we're hearing. You know, this is kind of like an unboxing episode. Just of... so you know, everything's sterile, though. You know, I'm opening it. Stale? It's sterile. Oh, sterile. I get those two words mixed up. She said that she should do this before we go live. Yeah, Why? I, I warned you guys. Yeah, Why? and you're like, no, everything is on the show. Yeah, I don't want people to think we're tricking them. No, that it's this not is real. real. This, is, this real, is real. As real as it gets. You know, it's it's you. You know, have a really. You never have a second chance to make a first impression, Howie. Which is why I recommend the classics like Lucille Ball or Betty White, Alan Alda. Those are very, very good first impressions. What's the weirdest story, uh, Natasha, that you can share about oh, my I have daughter? A weirdest story ever. Okay, go about ahead. Us. No, no, no. Let no. Just, okay, let just, just go. go ahead. Just go. What's the weirdest story about, ever? About us. Yeah. So, um, uh -oh. one time we had a party at your house when we were little. Did I know that? I think so. Well, when you say little. I mean, no, we were like 17. Oh, the little. And there was like five of us. When we were little. <laughs> we were like, we were, we were like shorter. about six of us. You were shorter. Okay. We were shorter. Yeah. And, um. And I think Jackie was called into your bedroom and you saw her tongue ring. Oh, we talked about this. Yeah. And then tongue ring. it was a, a nude colored tongue ring. And then you got really mad because you said, where did, what is, what is that in your mouth? And then you drove us all home that okay. night, really upset. Yeah. Good for you, Al. Yeah. And I, I wasn't there when that piercing happened. Okay. What made I had you nothing do to that, do with Jackie? that. What? what made you get a tongue ring? What, what was it about? Natasha. Oh. No, well, no, Natasha's no, a leader. No. These no, are no. all Natasha's ideas. That's what you said. You said, I said, why the fuck would you get a tongue ring? Why would you do I something you who, so who crazy? Was. And you said, this was Natasha's idea, and she's my best friend. I no. would do anything for her. I told you. It was Lindsay Zackheim and Daniel Abacassis. <laughs> but, really? but what is yeah. the, how is that even a good, look, be mad, a good look to have? No, I think the funniest story is when we went to Mexico together. Oh, with Natasha, oh, so boy. we went to Mexico. Oh, boy. We went to we went to Mexico. <laughs> we went to Mexico. Natasha came with us on a trip to Mexico. We were going a family trip, mm -hmm. and and it, it was nice. She uh, Jackie said, "Can I bring my best friend?" Uh -huh. And I said, "Okay, Natasha." Natasha, uh, you know, we talked to her parents and everything. She's probably seventeen at the time. Yeah, about seventeen. Yeah, shorter. Yeah, she was shorter. <laughs> she was little. So we land, and within the first day, she goes. Someone stole my wallet, my passport. Passport and cash. Oh, boy. All my cash. Wow. And my passport. Now we're in Mexico. That's true. And we have no passport and no wallet. But luckily mm. we flew private, so. Luckily. <laughs> so um, we were so lucky. So first of all, on the first day she lost all her cash. So uh, Terry gave her, so that she has cash, we'll figure out what to do with the, with the uh, passport, but we'll give her $100 cash, just so that she has some spending money. With the thank any, you, that was really nice of you. I know for like and, <laughs> for like essentials, right? If she needed it, like if food she needed a drink and, somewhere, yeah. or mm -hmm. she was stuck, or they had to get in the cab, or whatever they did. Anyway, mm -hmm. I think uh, three hours after we handed her the hundred dollar, uh, hundred dollars, she showed up. She goes, "Do you like this bathing suit? I bought it. It was only a hundred dollars." I don't remember that part. Did she not buy a bathing suit? She for bought two. She bought a Corona and a Budweiser. I one. remember that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it said on the bathing suit. So now she was out of cash. Oh my God. So <laughs> then we had to do things like we were really worried. We had to draw uh, me and my friend Lou, uh, Louis uh, Navoa. There's another Lou who speaks Spanish. What yeah. the fuck? 
Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll always hang out with a Lou. It doesn't have to be you as long as it's a Lou. <laughs> but I have two at the time. That was my Lulu time. So so uh, we had to go downtown to the police department, figure out how are we going to, or the uh, embassy, how are we going to get a uh, passport to bring right. this kid back home right. over the border. Anyway, we got some sort of pass or something, but it wasn't a passport, and we had to pass through American Customs. They made us land in Galveston, Texas, and we go to U.S. Customs, and the customs officer... They said, all right, we just have to ask you a few questions to guarantee us that you're an American citizen. And you know that, uh, like, I became an American citizen, I'm Canadian, and I had to go and you have to do a test. So mm -hmm. they would ask things like, you know, who is the first president of the United States? Which I got right. Mm. I said. Well, it proves it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. It right go there. ahead I, said, I said George Washington. Okay. Isn't that the Can't first And then they <laughs> asked you a next question. <laughs> What is is that right? Is that the first president? I don't know. I'm yeah, Canadian. it's the first. Yeah, yeah. President. all right, right. But they asked you another question that was equally as difficult. Yeah, I got the other ones wrong. Right, and what did you say to the customs officer? See, so, yeah, I'm American. No, no. You no. said, can you ask me something about, about music? Because <laughs> I'm really good at music. I follow. Why don't you ask me a music question? Oh yeah, I did it's say. not a fucking game show. You're <laughs> not on Jeopardy. <laughs> Well, with my memory, it is a game. I mean, this is challenging to remember back then. Back <laughs> but this is the person that's about to stick needles into us. <laughs> you know, no, ja Jackie's story about the, the, the thing in her tongue reminded mm -hmm. me years ago I got, a, I got a tattoo on my ass. Did you? Of what? I don't know. It's on my fucking ass. So you can't see it? <laughs> it says this end up. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, but you got, we got you back in the country. Yes, thank you. They said that there's no way. <laughs> it's only an American that wouldn't know this yeah, knowledge right. about America. <laughs> definitely, because you don't know anything about yeah, the history of that, you are sense. definitely from this country. Yeah. Yeah. Because somebody trying to sneak in <laughs> would, know the answer. would know the answer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we have a guest too. You're welcome to come in now. It's Rick Glassman. I'm a fan of this guy. He's a comic. Do you know Rick Glassman? No, but I brought some notes. Okay. Come on in. It's up to him. He doesn't want to yet. He's He what? He's going I, to the bathroom. You're going to the bathroom? <laughs> you don't have to. You can come in. She's a nurse. She can give you a catheter. And then you can, you oh, don't have to. Help with peas. What? I don't need help with peas. Poop. Oh, Just oh poop. You're, you're going to poop now? I have Let's magnesium. Let me look in the mirror and then come in. Okay. You want to look in the mirror before a podcast? No, it, there's the best, cameras too. I feel like the best laxative is uh, public speaking. Is it? N you know, nerves causes he's poops, constipated. Right? Nervous poops. Public is speaking is the big lax is the best laxative. I do that for a living. <laughs> and I can't tell you that's how many times I've shit, shit myself on stage. <laughs> and that's why you passed out too. Yeah, it is. Really? Yeah. Is that why I passed? She's out? She's the one that called. You know, every I got a ton of phone calls that day, and everyone was like, "I'm so sorry. How's your dad? Are you okay?" She called me, very matter of fact, and was just like. Uh, he is dehydrated because of the colonoscopy. Just like got straight to nurse's business. Like knew exactly what if it was. If we wanted a third, could we have a third? Mm -hmm. We'll find out if hey, we want. Uh, yeah. You can't gotta offer so you got IVs scared, to huh? guests too. What? You got scared. I did get wouldn't you get scared if a family member passed out? I don't even like him and I got scared. Yeah. Yeah, the go light stuff that they make you drink is pretty hardcore. No, well, it, 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 I'm gonna repeat again. So that's why I did have the colonoscopy. They emptied me. Have you ever had a colonoscopy? No. No. Have you? It, I I work in a like a surgery center where we did a lot of those. So the patient teaching is important after. So the nurse should have told you to kind of lay low after that. And instead, you went on Logan Paul's podcast and traveled. Yeah, I was here yeah. till like seven o'clock <laughs> that night. Hey. What is all this paperwork you've given me, Natasha? Okay, that's like. By the way, Natasha, is it okay to say your last name? Yes. I don't want you to get like we have. I don't know who my following is here. You could end up with some weird. Natasha Mandelman. Yes. Are, is is YBL on Instagram? Yeah, so you can follow us at Your Best Life Medical Group. There he is. Check himself in the mirror. You know, she hey, also uh, hey. How are she you? also made a jingle. That's nice Lou. That's Lou. Nice you, the sixth lead was it. Your Best Life. You could ask for more. We'll <laughs> send the nurse. Just open the door. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Hi. Nice Put on your headset so we can hear you. Oh, seven, seven, three, zero, seven, three, four. Why be hell? He doesn't need you. 
Oh, wow, that's your jingle. That's Natasha's jingle. We made Rick, it just for the show. Rick is sitting down, but he hasn't put his headset on yet. Here we go. Oh, wait, there's a headset right there that's plugged in already. I but feel they, like if anybody would understand, you guys would. No, he's he's uh, like one of us. What kind are they? Uh, uh, I don't know. It's not with my ears. It's okay. not plugged in. Well, no, he'll oh, plug oh, it in. Oh. He brings I, his own. I get it. In other people's heads. Where is that one plugged into? I got it, I got it. I'm a producer myself. Is it because of germs? Oh, wait, are you about to cough? You look like you were about to cough. Oh, I, I haven't figured out the confident face yet. I was saying, like, I'm a producer. Oh, oh, the tongue in the, the cheek? Con- you put the tongue in the cheek? That's where the saying comes from. <laughs> the tongue in the cheek. Tongue in cheek. Comes from tongue in cheek. Yeah. Hey, I see what you're doing. Look I, at this. Do you, you know? Look what, at this. Yeah. You don't know how to put the fucking mic anywhere near where you are. Right. This guy comes with an entire Radio Shack setup. He got his own podcast. He doesn't want that headset. Yeah, he I, don't, I don't use these. I'm too good. He's uh, a... <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do you know why? Do, do you know why? This is one of the funniest guys. Know. You, you, no, Lou, you don't know. You got to watch. So I, I'm uh, I, one of the funniest bits that you've done that I enjoyed, Rick, as you set, set up, and and that is, um, it was for JFL. You know, I'm involved in JFL. Did you know you're in JFL? Yeah. yeah so you did that show with John Doerr. Yes. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And you and you kept switching the. Uh, I had the wrong intro. Which was one of the most committed pieces I've ever seen in my life because you did the wrong intro and uh, it was mixed with your grandfather's eulogy. (laughs) Unfortunately. Yeah, he had two things or three things in his pocket. (laughs) And then he just kept, it it already is hilarious. hilarious. I'm going to interrupt real quick. It's not the headphones. I don't, I don't, I can't hear on my left. Listen out of your right. You brought your own headphones and you're complaining about our equipment? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I don't have know. Ever, to... He has a like crazy setup, though. I listen. I watch your podcast. You have like cameras and oh. mics and headsets and, and an, everything anim- everywhere. Animation. Yeah. I might have to use those. Do you have another quarter inch? Do you want a piece of paper between the your yes. head and the? Uh, yes. Let's do that. Give him ours and let him put napkins in. <laughs> I'm going to ask you guys something, and the answer is yes. I'm sure already, but if it's not, that's fine. And just be honest. Do you want an IV? What are those? They're free. They're, are are yeah. you giving IVs really? Yeah. Yeah. You want one? Free IVs. I had mine already. Let's let's do this for a little. See how things go, um, because that's that's scary. Why? No. This come is on. somebody I don't know putting a needle in me. Oh, it's Natasha. <laughs> Ask her who the president of the United States is. Natasha. Yeah. Hi, Natasha. I'm Hi, Rick. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Good. Thank you. Uh, it's my my pleasure. <laughs> what are they? What are they? So uh, this is just saline solution. So it's good for hydration. Um, I have <laughs> vitamins, and I'm going to go over all the options of vitamins too. I heard that you were constipated. I have magnesium. I I've taken it. Um, and then uh, yeah, so this is uh, it's probably about 45 minutes. Do by you guys the time do it? I start running it. Yeah. Well, we let the guest do it first. If the guest survives, then we are on. I'm not going to do it. I know you're joking. It's <laughs> something about it that's scary to me. No, we're doing it. What's scary? No, he doesn't. Have, don't What's force wrong? him. He doesn't. Why are you have taking to? your headsets off? I thought. Oh man, this is starting. Heck, is this okay? Am I, is, am I being? Am I too? Am I being too much? No. No. Not it. No. 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 Okay. Um, okay. I'll, it'll calm down. We'll calm, it'll, don't calm no. down. Not we calm love down. this. You don't have to calm down. All right. We love you, buddy. Thank and you. I get it. You know, I'm. Uh, I have issues. I know. I'm really medicated, and we have a nurse on standby. And Lou's here for you That's if right. you need anybody. Do you know why when they take a picture of a clock or a watch that they're trying to sell, it says ten after two? No, you? ten after ten. Yes. Why? You don't even know what time it is in the question. How do you know no. why? Did they always take a picture of a watch or yeah. a clock when they're selling it and it says 10 after 10. Do you know why? No. That happens to be the best time to take a picture of a watch or a clock. No, this. What? They're handing him. Uh, yeah, that's this the best is a time. Screw in, this is a screw in one. He doesn't want that one. I, I, would, I don't mind it. It's just the headphones don't allow A lot it. of people do this stuff before the actual <laughs> podcast. Once we are set and ready to go, the podcast is over. We just kind of. Sure, I understand. I understand. Why did you do that? Yeah, you got to sit next to me with this. <laughs> it came out of my. I mouth. have COVID test. So. Oh, have you taken a COVID? Are you vaccinated? I am vaccinated. Yes. Yeah. Do you do you want you a COVID would, test? She does that. They go I, to sets. I have uh, an antibody test. I, t- too. I, I, t- I have a I have lateral that. flow that I take. You have what? I took a lateral flow. Is that okay. good enough? Yeah. 
Yeah. Is that like a what piss? What is that? It's like a piss. The I antigen. Think. Once you get a certain amount of YouTube subscribers, they send you these uh, lateral flow tests. Is it the Abbott one? I, I'm going to have to use the other headphones. Whatever I'm going to get, I'm going to get. Get them the get them two napkins and the <laughs> just, headphones. Just the headsets. The headsets. If, if they you want napkins on the side, no. Wipe the wipe the headsets. What is that? I want to. Um, is, is this always what you guys have? We don't always do IV, so, so, but cool. last week no, I did no, no. a colonoscopy. <laughs> he did, I don't know if you heard. He passed out and went to the hospital last week. It was because of dehydration. Well, I said that. It was because of this IV. I just came from no. here and I left. <laughs> I passed out. And boy, your arm's tired. So I'm trying to take care of my dad. Did you wipe it with uh, it uh, alcohol? Wiped? Look. Here. look. Let me, I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah, Let you him leave do it. it. Oh, my <laughs> God. Edit around. You, you are don't send it me... to me. I'll edit it. We won't edit. You're the most accommodating host of anything. What no, I'm thinking? not. I love this. I love that people see that, right? This is, I would not, I'm not making fun of him because I would do even more. <laughs> I would. I love that you do this. It makes me feel comfortable around you. Why? Jesus, why would? again. I didn't sneeze. <laughs> yeah, you will. I, I, I horked. I horked. Okay. That was a loogie. But um, no, I don't always do this. I want to. This is my daughter. Jacqueline is my daughter. Yes. And this is Hi. her best friend who has a great company. Who is a registered nurse, like an actual. Do you nurse. have on your podcast, which is a very successful podcast, do you have a, a what did you call them? A COVID compliance officer? We don't have that. We're not that successful. No, I don't yet. have a, a, anyone. I, I'm, I'm just there by myself and I walk people in. And uh, I ask if they are tested, and I trust that they are when they say they are. Mm -hmm. And then I'm nervous for 20 minutes, and then we get into the jokes. But See? Do you get nervous afterwards? My biggest thing is afterwards, thinking back on, like, the what-ifs and stuff like that. As far as sickness or content? Yeah. N not content. I'm talking about, I have anxiety. She doesn't give a shit about the show. No, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm specifically talking about, like, m my anxieties that I have. I'm usually, I could get over it and be fine in the moment. And then for days after, I, like, replay scenarios. Does yeah. that happen to you? It will now. No. Sorry. You're triggered. <laughs> Sorry. You're, Sorry. you're triggering. You're triggering a guest. You don't do that. Uh, no, I, I, uh, my. Uh, Keep going. I don't. Once something's done, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. I think I'd be making up an answer at this point. I don't connect with that one. No, but I understand what you're saying. Okay. But if you can well, get over the moment, why don't you make every I, moment a start? moment? I can't get over the moment. Oh, the moment I'm sitting in it is where okay. the anxiety is, and then once it's done, it's like, well, because it's all it's moments, not, right? Everything in I our think life that's, is moments. Uh, that's probably but are you, a healthier. Are you, have way you been per, uh, diagnosed with anything? In have you been diagnosed? Uh, Wait. yes. That's Jackie's. Uh, Jesus Christ. What? Uh, uh, <laughs> How much Just time do you seriously have? Seriously, start this over. Start this over. No, start no, over. no, <laughs> no. I, t you know, it's your equipment. Is that not working well, too? Well, my no equipment left. was working. You pulled the plug out when you came in to, to replace it with your no. equipment and one ear didn't work. Howie? <laughs> no. It's you. <laughs> It's you and it's you guys. So then don't wear a headphone. He just doesn't have to wear headphones. Then how's he going to hear us? <sighs> he can hear us. Can you hear us? <laughs> I can hear you. I do. I do. Oh, shit. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> That's amazing. I'll just listen to the people in the back room. Yeah, they just I'll give me cues know. and stuff. I do like a headphone, but it's when you only hear it out I of signed. one. Okay. Do you want? Yeah, it's weird. I'll, I'll Just to make you feel comfortable, I'm not going to wear a headset and then I can talk to... I don't care about what anybody else says. I want, I want, I need fluids. Anyway, Rick, Man. you're one of the funniest. Are you, you're not, you okay? hot now? No, I, I'm, I'm totally fine. There's something, there's an energy that I'm having that, sorry, we'll no, subtitles in. No, it's okay. Just, I'm a little, uh, I know what it is. From the moment you walked in, you had to go shit and check your face. <laughs> I asked you for an IV, you didn't take it. You plugged in your own equipment that didn't work. Now you're feeling a little jittery. I just need you to calm down and enjoy yourself. <laughs> yeah. If this were my podcast, uh -huh. I would know that I would be jump cutting. I'd keep the funny stuff. I would get rid of the everything else. What, in your opinion right now, because you are a successful podcaster and comedian and actor, um, what would you edit right now from what we've done so far? Uh, I would have... I would have whatever was here before. Jeremy, you. listen, because the editor's right here. So, whatever happened before I got here, yeah, I pop in. But once I come in, um, we just 
We show me, oh, you brought your own headphones, jump cut, I plug them in, jump cut. Oh, that's not working a thing, jump cut. They give me the new quarter inch, jump cut. They give me the new headphones, jump cut. It's not working, jump cut. You take yours off. We keep in me saying we're going to start over. Theme music. Um. Mm. Jeremy? <laughs> He's playing the theme music. music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. We don't have that kind of time, but we'll, we'll take those. I love the notes. I love the notes. A lot of you know a lot of people come me, on the show and don't give us like they give us content, but not production input, and that's what I love about you. I don't have good clay, but I know how to mold it. You know what's funny though? One of the things I love Before about I your podcast it is it seems so raw. So for me to hear about like all the structure that you put into place and like all the thought that goes into producing and editing and stuff is so extravagant because one of the, when they when the guests walk in you hear all the background stuff that's going on so i didn't even know what is going on now Alex. it doesn't matter just keep talking no but i'm surprised to hear that i don't I like distractions we like to just go with the flow <laughs> <laughs> you're getting a physical right now yeah i uh uh i love showing the guests walk in because there's a real moment a lot of times i'm meeting the guests for the first time yeah um but the, the that's my son alex what are you trying to do there, really? Alex? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hey, Alex. Hi. Um, the uh, uh, the to get it started is a half hour. Like th I'm always this at the beginning of something. Yeah. I love this. Well, th thank you. No, but it's. I hate it. Really? Yeah. Why? Um, because I'm, this is real. This is raw energy. And this isn't, uh, there's absolutely no performance right now. It's just you settling in. As a fan, I love to see the real you. Mm. And I love. Uh, uh, I agree. And it's not pretentious. It's just as an easy. Like, yeah, thank you. And he can put on his headphones I'm done. now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not pretentious. Said, and it's just easy to watch. Yeah. Alex, my brother, said you could try your headphones again now. It should wait. Your what? headsets. You know, speaking of that, I spell error with one R. No. That's the way I His, roll with oh, one our, our headphones. The other sorry. one. Sorry. Okay. I like that. It's a solid joke, and I'm sorry that we weren't paying attention. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> they just so gave him a round of applause. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yes. Um, yeah. What is I've never put a hot, I've got a hot pad, like a hot so pocket on my, find, uh, like a pop tart. So that tart. she could find a vein. Ooh. I've never, I just had, I had so much IV this week already. How much have you had? I don't know. Really? How much is in a bag? What? You had so, more? I was is in the it hospital. too much? Can he have too much? No, it's okay. But what if I drown in my own water? Do you have any heart, liver, kidney issues? Yeah. Heart. So um, for heart, mm -hmm. is it just high blood pressure? No, no. I don't have high blood pressure. AFib. I had AFib. Okay. So yeah, for that, I would just do 500. Um, okay. For I'm just doing 500. I will not go one <laughs> thing over 500. You know, my dad is the complete opposite of you, though, because we what? come in and all the producers are like, OK, we're well, still getting set up. He's like, no, start now. Start now. And they're like running around trying to get stuff <laughs> set up. He just wants to start in the moment yeah. so that like he doesn't miss a single thing. He doesn't want anything edited Nothing out. Nothing important yeah. is lost. Can you turn things you heard it here first, Howie. Umbrella in a can. Huh? <laughs> Explain to him. It's my new product. We also have a whole agenda of market. things to talk about, but we usually don't get to them either. So yeah, I I, I empathize with that. <laughs> Why uh, do you have that? Do you have that? Where yeah. you don't get to the point? Yeah, I would also love to just get started too. <clears throat> Go ahead, get started. But uh. Go ahead. You're the guest. <laughs> I, I was commenting on what you were saying about yeah. how Howie and I are opposites. Yeah. I would like to get started too, but producing the podcast is a very different mindset than just being like on it. Yeah. And. Uh, Oh yeah. Okay. We're Can good. Tapping. I don't know. I, you ever you ever just you, you do stand up. You ever do a stand up and then somebody in the front row is getting an IV. Line. No. You just said. Uh, <laughs> well, you were asking me a question. She said, "Am I okay with the sight of blood?" Uh, yeah, I do stand up. I'm saying you ever you doing a show and then the person in the front row is getting an IV <laughs> and you're it's a little distracting. <laughs> mm. You know. I'm I'm sensing some similarity to. I'm thinking. Where have I <laughs> seen that or heard that? Is this bad? Am I making it? No, I just, I'm just, I am just going to wait. Why wait? Why? There's so much to do right now. I'm going to try something I've never done before. Okay. I'm going to release everything. Uh -huh. No, in here? Go go to the other room to I'll do that. Back. Please. 
<laughs> no, I um, I, th- th- what you said about uh, about um, uh, it's not performative, and this is who I really am. Do you remember that part of the I conversation? Do. I was here. <laughs> there's uh, there's something that I'm I'm not sure about that has been something I've been checking in with a lot uh, with myself. I don't know what's performative a lot of the time because but that's lo- that makes art real. Look at this. It should, it this should is not a performance. There's a needle going in right now. <clears throat> Don't nobody scream. You don't Wait. have to look, everybody. The most effective. You don't have to look. We're talking to everybody on YouTube. Okay, say like ah. Say ah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it was a joke. Daniel told me to tell you. <laughs> Daniel told you to tell me that joke. Yeah, so he she said gives say credit. Ah. That's a good. It's a good joke. <laughs> I don't really get it. How would you spell it? A A A. How do you spell ah? Small toes. Wiggle your toes. Wiggle, Wiggle your toes. toes. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't even hurt at all. It doesn't hurt at all. It would hurt more if you weren't on camera. What? There's something about being on stage or on camera where your I feel that people are braver. Oh, you're just lucky you weren't here for our, our um, colonoscopy episode. Oh. You did it on? Oh, yeah. We all did it. <laughs> we'll cut to a clip. <laughs> <laughs> I find you, you're from, I know, I, I, I did a little research on you. Don't worry. You don't need to validate anything. You could ask me or you could, whatever. Cleveland. I know you're from Cleveland. Okay. Wait, but I'm curious. I'm curious. You okay. asked him something ahead, before that he we didn't get a chance to answer. Have you been diagnosed arm? with anything? Um, like this is the wrong arm. I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best way. Turn, turn, it's the best no, no, no. way. I'll, I'll 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 position you in a it's second. The wrong I just want to tell you that there's no metal. <clears throat> there's only a little plastic tube in there, so you could bend your arm or anything. Like it's. Don't worry. There's no. No, metal. I'm not worried. Hey. Not worried. In the interest okay. of time, I have a suggestion. Wait. Put, okay. The fat lady sing. Uh, oh. the f- <laughs> yeah, I'll say that. There you go. The fat lady you should sing a swan song. Okay. That's my suggestion. All right. Are you reading jokes? No. Yes. I'm making them up right off the top of my fucking head. Why do you ask? <laughs> it looked like you were looking at your phone during Maybe it. I was. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Lou. <laughs> I brought some notes. How much paperwork do you have? What? I want to tell you the thing I was saying. Okay. Okay. About the not knowing about the performing thing, because I, I would like to hear your take on this. Okay. A lot of the language I have and the tools I have with comedy uh, have come from needing to find a way to explain myself without being, at least controlling how much I'm being, without being too demanding or too weird or. My podcast is called Take Your Shoes Off because that's the easiest rule to ask somebody. Well, that makes sense. But then there's uh, so many more when they come in the house. Okay. Uh, And there's so many more, especially when I was younger in my life, of so many things I have to do and I need it this way. So I found ways of doing jokes to kind of, oh, that's funny. You know, uh, so now jokes are a language, quite literally, a way to communicate. So when I'm coming in and you're like, this is real, this is who you are. Yeah, it is. But also... I sometimes feel myself doing shtick that I'm not meaning to do. And then I catch myself with the headphones. I'm like, oh, am I being performative? And I need to change. I I mean, I mean it. Everything I'm doing, I mean, but the way I'm saying it, there are people that are a little easier, you know, that I I sometimes, I don't like how how much this was when I came in. Does that make sense? But you, but... You weren't being performative because you weren't thinking about it and planning it. It was literally just you. So why wh- why are you concerned about that? Uh, well, I'm sorry for not making this as silly as I thought it would be and it was, but I'm realizing while talking no, to you. No, I don't care. First of all, you know, I also relate to you. Yes. And I've, I've been very open about my mental health issues, yeah. which were incredibly debilitating almost my entire life, but the Biggest ease I've had and the biggest panacea for me, even. What's panacea mean? What the fuck is panacea? You're, 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 the f- what's the matter with you? Uh, uh, like a penicillin, like a like a th- th- that eases it, the safety yeah, yeah. net. That yeah. uh, the the medicine. biggest the biggest medicine to get Pans- through has been stand up comedy, yeah. and not only stand up comedy, but the ability to. Um, I I feel like I'm I'm comfortable with my discomfort. And when I am uncomfortable in a public situation, I sometimes become very silly. 
I become. I think it and drove I, you. I, over, I think it really did drive you. The, these. Well, you know, if if mental health, if mental illness is a gift, then I'd, I'd love to return it. But but the point is, I don't think that's why I'm successful. But I understand, like when you came in, it was you were in an uncomfortable situation, and it is. It's uncomfortable even if nothing was happening. Walking in, meeting new people like that, and because you have an innate. Uh, sense of humor and craziness mm-hmm. that that works for you that's also what your career and what you're known for but it's also uh, you don't have to explain to me that that's uncomfortable and i would love in a performative um environment like a podcast or a television show i'd like to be fully comfortable and in control of how i control that's is, what is i'm saying like, but that's our issue all the time is is controlling there's there's also something to uh the truth that for right or wrong, this is a newer thing for me, I think because I'm, I'm watching myself every week, you know, editing and working on this, is there, for right or wrong, I would like to be able to look at myself and say, he's an easy guy. You know, I, I'm, I'm getting a- For who? Um, the judgment I have when watching, like, Jesus fucking Christ, just relax, dude. You know, like, I can't, I can't well, always- Well, yeah, I don't know, you're much younger than me and I don't know thank how you. much you know. I, don't thank me I'm for your age. I really appreciate that. You know, the fact that your parents fucked 30 years after my parents is not oh, they were something nervous. you need to thank me for. <laughs> but, but the point is that- um, For me? It's funny, just, how he's funny. Because <laughs> your parents fucked 30 years ago, you don't have to thank me for that. <laughs> you getting mad at the audience I'm for just, laughing? I'm no, I, 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 old time. I just hold for the laugh, and as long as he's that, giggling. That was your line. I just said your line. My line is: I'm no. opening up another business, an entrepreneur. I have an entrepreneurial spirit. It's a niche business. Blunt objects are us. These are the store for people that are looking for a blunt object. Who knows why? But I'll sell it to them. Edit that out. <laughs> My point is that <laughs> I stopped worrying as I got older how, y- y- listen, you're producing yourself, so you have to sit. I don't know if that's healthy to sit and watch yourself over and over and over again. And, I have a take and, on that, but and, we, maybe and, we get to it. Okay. And because you second guess yourself, I like, and that's what I do here, you know, whether it's my daughter or Jeremy or Caroline or Rich or anybody there, I realized early on that I am not a good um, uh, judge of how I am going to be perceived. Are you waiting? Are you a good That's judge of weird. others? That's weird, because you're, you're an AGT. You're an AGT. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Oh! America's got, you weren't even going there. But I was I, going I'm there. Giving, you are? Yeah. Brilliant. You're I did an America's Got Talent bit on my podcast a couple weeks ago. Did you? You I were in it. That. Really? You yeah. Know? Wow, thank you. Well, yeah. maybe not. I, I don't talk- know. Was it uh, you, were, you were in it. Um, we did a bit. Well, uh, that's a no. Wait, I didn't hear the question then. But why aren't you wearing a headset? <laughs> oh, um, I, I, that's where I'm at now. <laughs> There's a lot going on and even more with this. And I just decided I made my decision and I'm very comfortable. No, but I love how you're doing it. But you're not wearing the headset, but yet you're you're it's a cool wearing vibe. it. It's kind of like when you sit in a chair with a backrest, but you're a cool teacher and you put the backrest in front of you and you're saying, I'm going to use it, but I'm going to use it on my terms. Wow. You know, I saw the word exit on the highway the other day while driving. I think it's a sign. <laughs> Edit that out. <laughs> you can't hear the sound effects. No. There's a great it doesn't sound matter. effect. Okay. <laughs> um, Go ahead. What were we saying? We were saying something. Yes. Uh, watching myself, I think, has been a great thing. Really? It's, it's been very hard. Yes. I, I don't think it should be. I don't know how sustainable it is. You think you make good decisions for yourself? Are you making, are you contemplating, are you, uh, are you doing it for yourself or do you think this is, because when we're in this business, I was, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place, but ultimately you want to garner an audience. Right. And sometimes we are so critical of ourselves that we'll cut out something that maybe the audience will no, like. No, no. Uh, I, 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 my, I watch it as somebody who uh, can't control me. I'm watching as somebody who's controlling the podcast. I'm trying to make what's best for the podcast. But at the beginning of my career, the way I started, if you go look at old videos, I was just terrified. And that terror was my whole act. I yes. didn't have an act. Well, it I, was I, hilarious. 
that's not the point. The it point is, the is point. I was going, okay, okay, because I couldn't think of what to say. And I'm going, what, what? Because I didn't understand what they were laughing at. And I carried rubber gloves because I didn't, I, 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 in case I had to go to a, a, a public restroom like yeah. you just did, I would have a rubber glove with me. And out of nothing to do, I pulled it over my head and blew it up. It's not like something where I said, you know, tonight I'm going to blow a rubber glove up on my head. So if I would watch it, in my mind, this was just me being terrified and it was embarrassing. But people no. were responding to it, so I let. No, you're looking at it wrong. No, he's wrong. he's he's that's his truth. That's what, no, that's how he felt. But he's wrong. Well, he's wrong. what he did was hilarious. Well, I'm not, it was entertainment. But I find that, that about you. The, the the point he's making is that that there are multiple perspectives, and yes, you're saying you see. In positive. retrospect, he's saying I was terrified. I was this. I was no. That. In the moment, I was terrified. No, but I'm saying when you when you're analyzing what you did. That's what he's trying what, to say to me. No, but what I'm saying is that he understood <laughs> what he did was funny. I'm beyond but so does he. Else. I get it. I understand what you're saying. I find you like I'm looking back. I've, I feel. I hope you don't take this negatively. But I feel like you're a young me. Um, I don't take that negatively because I, I, I like myself. Yeah, yeah <laughs> so. seeing, seeing. Um, uh, I've you know, I've just met you, but seeing you and there aren't many people. Um, I guess now there are some more with podcasts, but that are publicly talking about that kind of stuff. And uh, I take it as a compliment when somebody is able to uh, have their challenges and it's, it's, it becomes part of the identity. I don't think it's something we should rely on necessarily. I don't want to be known as the guy who blah, blah, blah. But it is, I like basketball. I don't like to touch things. I'm Jew. I have a lot of different things. And this is one of them. And I don't edit that out and I don't edit around it. Um, because the key to uh, connecting with an audience, no matter what you're doing, is authenticity. Yep. They have to believe it. And either you gotta be a really good actor or you Thank gotta you. be authentic. You know, you gotta be real. And you could, in, in your case, you're probably both. You know, a really good actor and, and authentic, right? But to overthink how people are going to perceive something you do or how you show up or what happens in the 10 minutes is too much. Hear me on this, okay? There's a difference between worrying. Oh, I'm sorry. You said hear me on this. And There's a difference between worrying about how other people's other people other people perceive you, other people perceive me. Speaking from my uh, perspective, versus seeing myself on camera and then gaining perspective of like, oh, like I didn't see myself that way yet, and being able to see myself on camera and seeing some of the things I'm doing and not liking it. Maybe I'm judging. Maybe I'm just trying to grow, and I truly don't know the difference. But like there are times, I'll give you a, an example. Uh, I watch myself um, in a moment. I'm talking about something that I don't like what we're talking about. I, I don't know if you could relate to this, but you change the subject. And I <laughs> do it all the time. And I watch myself do that. And I get mad at myself as an audience member watching some guy, even though that guy is me. Let the other person say the thought. I, what was he going to get to? In the moment, I don't know. So I have now, I'm trying to add on to my tools if I'm distracted or I don't like what the person's saying or something, give it at least another 15 seconds. See where it goes. 15 as minutes, long I as would give it 15 more minutes. All right. I, I think that it's objective. You know, like maybe the fact that you're not listening or you interrupt or you don't pay attention or you're not catching on or you're doing something might possibly, you, everything you're saying makes sense on paper, but then if you're, just holding for another 15 seconds because you think that looks better or it looks like you're not cutting people off or it makes you look more interested, then you lose some of the authenticity because then you become it becomes mechanical rather than natural. And here we're all natural except for the fluids going into my body. Right now, eight seconds ago while you were telling me what you're telling me, I knew what you're talking about, but I didn't cut you off to stop you to explain, no, 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 that's not what I meant. I let you finish. Thank you. You're welcome. I wrote a poem. Go ahead. I never used a bidet before until I did. And then when I flushed it, it sprayed my face. I will never use one again, I said, but then I did because I wanted to wash my face. Go ahead, finish your thought. You let him finish. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Sometimes. Well, it was a fucking poem. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to change and, and I'm going to ask you a question. Go ahead. About laughing at people all right what happens when somebody tells you a joke right 
Never, and never you, happens. And you <laughs> don't think it's funny. <laughs> no disrespect. Watch. Let me watch you don't think what it's happens. funny. <laughs> I don't laugh, to be honest with you. I don't genuinely. You're lying. I'm lying. Because people come Please. up. No, people come up to him all the time on the street. Strangers will come up and it's either deal or no deal or ask if they cut an audition for AGT in front of him or they'll tell him a joke. Oh, that's the best. And he, Those are the best. whenever they tell a joke, regardless of whether or not it's funny, and I'll tell you, oh, the most of the fun. time it's no. not that funny. He... Like pretend smiles and laughs. Oh, to a stranger polite. coming up to me in the street, I, I'll laugh. Is that the question? In any situation, any in any situation where, like now, if you right now, I don't I don't know you Rick. that well, but I've been watching you. You know, I know Rick. <laughs> but Thank you. You're welcome. If you, as professionals, as, like if you would ask me, I'm going to open up with this in my next stand up act, or I want to do this on the podcast. Do you think that that's funny, or do you think this is the way to do it? I would answer you honestly, I, I, because of this situation that we're in right now and how I feel about you and I respect your work. Uh, it, it not, I respect every human being and have empathy, but some stranger who comes up to me in the street and wants to tell me a joke, they wanna make me laugh. So I feel like- It's transactional. I, yeah, and even if it's a joke I've heard a thousand times, I'm not gonna say to that person, you know, I've heard this joke, stop, I've heard it in, a million times. I feel like it's, you know, the fact that you even recognize me in this day and age when there are, you know, 8 million podcasts, 8 million channels. And you're wearing a and, mask. And, and, there's, and there's games. And you know who I am. And to, for me to give you a minute of your time, I feel like I would never have guessed that at this age, I'm an old guy. Um, you're the same age as her, you know, as my kids. You know, no, I would. Not. Yeah, you are. You're 37. You're 37? Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. You know, poetry you has become a you big... You look like you're 25. Oh, thanks. Poetry... Yeah, no, she's 37 with two kids. She's old. It's... Oh. Po poetry nice. has thanks, become Dad. a huge part of my life. <laughs> Pardon me? Poetry has become a huge, huge part of my life. I, I see poetry in almost everything. And, if, for example, I got up one morning and I was having my coffee and I looked out the window and, and the sun was shiny. And right. I thought, I I'm going to... <laughs> would write a poem and I because I was inspired by what I saw so I ran I ran and found some paper and a pen and I came back to the window and took a sip of the coffee and I looked out and, and I wrote this poem the sun is out and it's shining like in a situation like that right <laughs> where where you need to acknowledge it or the momentum shifts in a place that you don't know where it's going to go hold on but he loves awkwardness i think his no. sense of humor is awkwardness too. i live in in i feel i wake up the, if there's one feeling it's not an emotion but if there's one feeling that is overwhelming in my life it, it's awkward <laughs> it's a poem he said good joke by the way i said it's a fucking poem yeah don't call his poems jokes he doesn't like it very serious. I, I call anything that i enjoy a joke well really this is a delicious joke anything because yeah. yeah, everything you every... eat your jokes well yes. somebody has to <laughs> oh look she's taking selfies <laughs> so so um so the, the 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 laughing thing uh i meant more like interpersonally for the momentum flow but i want to move that over to why i talked about by your show on my show okay um uh do you know eric griffin stand-up comic yeah i i don't know him i know who he is I, i've been working at supernova and he's been getting up he's so funny he really is he's so funny and he's been on my podcast a whole bunch and the last time he was on uh we i was talking to him about uh, does he ever watch the stand-up auditions on your show i love your show i watch i've oh i watch all of them always come on um i'd like to talk to you about that off camera because I've had a dream of this thought that I don't want to put out there yet. Hey, are you wearing Beatles socks? I appreciate that. No, but they're the Simpsons. Oh, I have he a pair of Beatles socks. He always gets the Simpsons and the Beatles mixed up. <laughs> no, know. no, I have Beatles I socks that. that look exactly the they same. Both start with S. I think they went to the same sock manufacturer and just put Beatles pictures on one of them and Simpsons pictures on. Yeah, them. I think that's what. I they think did. so. I'm sorry to interrupt, no, but no. Eric Griffin is hilarious. But the, uh, I, I, there's an, there's an odd dynamic when people are auditioning specifically stand-up comedians because ladies and gentlemen howie mandel you walk out and you control the room in a th in a show how's everybody doing if that's what you know if you want to ask how they're doing or whatever your thing might be right but comics they have to come out 
and whatever their comedian energy is, they don't get to be that first. First, they have to be like, hey, you know, like I'm, I'm Rick and I'm doing this for my family because I haven't seen them in years and whatever the thing might be. And then like you kind of empathize and you feel for their story and then they have to go right into it. Right. And I feel that's so that's got to be so challenging. And judges, you, at least you acknowledge it maybe, but you often talk about that kind of stuff. Right. Like not just this, the act, but the act in this environment, whatever it might be. Right. Because you go through that. I wonder, do you talk about that to highlight that? Or do you talk about that because you see it and do other people not notice that kind of stuff? Does that Other question people make don't sense? notice it and you will notice it because you are a comedian and know that it takes, there is a jumping off point. And sometimes uh, somebody sending you down a path that isn't perfect. It's not what you want to sell, too. But knowing that that's our show, you know, I'll give you an example. And this is not, you know, when a magician comes on, who is, we had a magician in this last season. Um, I Dave, actually think David was, Copperfield? No. Okay. The guy that won? No, but not that. But but that that guy's not a good example of the story that okay. I'm going to tell. But the story that I'm going to tell is that they had a. This guy was amazing. He had a bandaged head. Yeah, and he wasn't talking. Yeah, and it's the same thing for Tape Face, who's now playing in uh, in Vegas. His act was he was kind of this weird mime, and and the magician was it created the mystery of him not talking. He he then he committed and right. said that's. I, I think comics need to do that too. Commit and to their persona. Hundred per, commit not just specifically the persona, but to understand the environment they're in. But that's 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 the mistake I always say to the comics. You know, I had a friend on uh, Dan Natterman, who I think did one of the funniest sets. He, did, he had a great set. He's hilarious. He's a hilarious guy. And what happened was he didn't. He he was having discussion like this for mm -hmm. whatever reason. Simon said. You know, I just didn't think that was oh, funny. That's wrong. And wait, wait, wait. It's not wrong that Simon said he didn't think it was funny. No, no, he not that part. No, Dan is, is, is a funny guy. Right. Dan said, you know, you, um, Dan said, listen, I respect the fact that you know everything and can create music superstars, but I think you don't know comedy. I, I, I think you, for you, comedy, you wouldn't know the difference he between said that your to Simon? comedy and your own asshole. Wow. Or something like that. Right. And, that the, and they, they blew up. And he went upstairs. <clears throat> I, I knew he was devastated. And I went and talked to him. And I said, can I tell you something? Not only was your act great, but that rebuttal is going to be the standout. And it was in that moment that was on Champions. But Simon was wrong. That's not the point that it's I'm making. not the point of the story. It's not the fucking point of the story. I'm not talking about the point of the story. <laughs> He's not talking hey. about the point of <laughs> But not just from a, another thing I've noticed, which I know is kind of going a little bit off topic, is it's not only about the comic in that environment for the comic. I think it's really hard on AGT2 for the audience to also understand the pressure that's on comedians. No, but in that you have moment. to know as a comedian. Am I getting B12? Yeah. Do you want? Yeah. <laughs> what else? Do, what else? I want some. I was B12. gonna say. I, I don't think. Like you know, the audience yeah. is always saying like, "Well, look at these crazy acts where they're flipping through the right. air," which is amazing. And I don't think they think that an amazing comic that made the room laugh, or even Brandon Leakes, your or your poet. I don't think they think that that deserves the same kind of credibility because they're just. But I don't up think there. that's the issue. The issue that I well, always well, tell people. I want you to from the sorry, finish that. What does that What does that mean? Credibility. What does credibility have to do with anything? No, I'm saying that I don't know if the audience sees the talent in what comics or spoken mm -hmm. word has to give because it's one single person. I don't know if they realize. They, like they, they the, put them. So what she's saying is they put themselves under more pressure than is necessary. Just yeah. do what you do. But what I will say yeah. to any comic, magician, singer, anybody who comes on the show, you start before you meet, a hundred percent. And if you create a character, even create if your character, that character is yourself, that character yes. needs to always don't break that. So my question to you is, as a as an advocate for comedians, and I I you, it's really nice watching you as a judge advocate for comedians. I, I, so it doesn't matter what anybody says. Here's my feeling, and I've said this to everybody. First of all, we are the number one show on television as far as the sheer number of people that watch. What else would it be? 
Pardon me. What else, else would you would base they it measure on? it? How else? Oh, would they uh, eighteen it? to forty-nine. You know, in the in the. Gotcha. W- we're not the. I don't know the age bracket. We're not stuff. in the age bracket. And we're not. Okay. Okay. You know, just sheer because people from five to ninety-five can sit down and watch. As somebody who's selling, you know, their comedy or their music or their talent, where where on earth does that size audience exist? Sure. So. I always say, even if there's two, 3,000 people in the room and four people sitting there in front of you, it doesn't matter how that audience reacts. It doesn't really matter how we react. If you are totally sold on what you want to do and you want the world to see that, just go there and let the world see that. It doesn't matter. Like even Heidi, you know, Heidi gets killed a lot for, um, they say she's hard on comics. But she's really not hard on comics. What she's telling you is she's just being honest. I find it phenomenal that the, a person who grew up in another country, whose first language is another, is is another, like, it's a, the fact that she's broadcasting on an American network is amazing, and she Shout can communicate. Shout out to Heidi Klum, we'll put her Instagram handle up here. Yeah. Pardon me? It's inspiring, Howie. What you just said to me is very, very inspiring, and I have another poem. Mike, and just remember, poems do not have to rhyme. They just don't. It's not a, a law. My kitchen is cold, and to be honest with you, I could stand a little heat. So what I'm saying is that the, that the um, it won't stop. It won't stop. But you got it stuck. You got stuck, stuck on the on critics. Crickets. <laughs> No, that don't. That's Come actually on. a good name for a special. Stuck on crazy. Cr- cr- <laughs> <laughs> when when a comic when a comic comes out, I really I'm censoring myself because there's something that I've been thinking about for a bit and it's not ready. And also, I don't want to do that. Don't, don't, yeah, you but don't have to. If we remember, I want to talk to you about this. We will. Remember. Um, but come out, and I would love to see you. Did you ever see Seth Ward on our show? Which one is Seth Ward? So Seth Ward, he, he's not a stand-up comic, but he is an improv guy. He's the guy that the bird. He, yeah, yeah. But his thing that he created and and a whole audience, whether you like it or not, he shows up every year in a in a different outfit. I told my buddy Brent about him in that. How like it or not, it's because it's uh, very Andy Kaufman esque. Also, he's taking into consideration not the act, but where he's putting the act. And I don't know the difference between the act and any word we have with him before and after he does his show. And that's the key for everybody coming on because the truth is that America ultimately will vote. If, if winning is your goal, to me, just getting exposed and doing what I do. Winning is, you know when I won and I feel like I've won? The day somebody dared me to get up on stage as a stand-up comic, I won. I don't care if I win a contest. I don't care if you pay me a dollar. I don't care if I get some stage time. Any time that I can do comedy, I'm the winner. Notoriety and fame are all fleeting. It doesn't mean anything. Just do what I do. And do what I do spectacularly wrong. You know, I I was a huge fan of Norm MacDonald's. And Norm uh, was asked, I don't know if you read, he was a good friend of Bob Saget's. Bob was here the other day and he was telling us this story. And he asked them to be part of his roast because they were good friends. And Norm says, that's not what I do, but if you want me to show up, I'll show up. And he did this performance piece, which he just read. Old jokes. Old jokes reading from a joke book. In the room, it died horribly. I I know the- Comedy Central said that was terrible. It is now a classic piece of video. But it's because of who did it. It's because of where he did it. It was contrary to what they were doing no but, it, but it's because but, but it was authentic he didn't yeah. want to it, it's he, because people in the room had expectations that were not being met and the problem with that as an audience as humans but i'm calling them an audience is people know what they're supposed to get even when they don't so when their expectations aren't met the the positive of that is being able to play with and manipulate those expectations the the but part, i see that in i see that in you you know like i i was also a huge fan of andy kaufman and I used to go to the clubs where he would read The Great Gatsby. Yeah. I was at the evening of the improv where he invited oh. everybody up to squeeze to, the boil. To touch his yeah. boil. To touch the boil. I was in the room, you know? And and the thing is that 
There are people that leave and are disgusted. What were you thinking when he did that, though? What were what was this? Going, is amazing. Yeah, you thought it was like really. I did, edge, and yeah. I was you know in that room of yeah. that audience that yeah. was invited. The people that thought it was amazing were the minority, but in retrospect. That is a story that goes on and lives on and is told. But so he had a bowl of alcohol, right? Yeah. And you touch the alcohol and then touch his bowl. He gave you a rubber glove. Yeah, My so. thought on that is, and I love that stuff. I've always loved that stuff. And I we saw like that, that stuff. in you. That bit, I, I don't want to get too much into, but I literally, I, I, I didn't do the act that I that I uh, did the, the walkthrough from, and I came up with that bit on my way to the club. And looking at it, I like the bit that I did. It could have it was my first time trying it. The beats were right. I didn't do it well, the way I would have wanted to. This is the, this is my thing. His first time he came up with a bit. He's on television. This was a, t a TV taping. Yeah. And the fact that you, uh, you know, there are people that would uh, spend a month putting together you and for the CW. Yeah, I did that. Yeah. Right. I don't know that I would have the wherewithal to in the years. moment. They spend years. Forget about a month. They would spend a lot of time perfecting. You know, there's a dichotomy in you. The fact that you think of an idea on your way to a TV taping, an international TV taping, you make up the bit, and then you're watching the bit, and 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 you're uh, and you watch the bit, and you go, I, I would have done this differently. As opposed to the person that lays something down on their podcast and then looks at it, looks at it, and wants to cut that out, wants to change that. I mean, those are, sounds like two different people. I don't change. Once the podcast begins, I don't change it. There has been podcasts that I was so embarrassed about because of the, what I was showing, but I put out anyway because I made a rule for myself, which is this is who I am. I if I if I open the door to controlling this, it's going to be way too difficult. So I do put that stuff out there. When I edit it, I'm trying to edit it to keep people wanting to watch. That's not the point I'm making. Oh, we're hope right now, like at this point, I don't think any is anybody watching. It's not live, Howie. <laughs> what is? <laughs> oh my God! Oh yeah! What a way to oh find yeah, that. baby! I want to talk about the 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 people that get it, um, love it, and the other people don't. And then years later, people get an appreciation. Because people showed them. Look at, he was joking. This was on purpose. Look how he controlled it. But I love when they, do, I don't know why. I do too. I live in the don't get world. But hear, hear me out. Is there a world, and I think there is, but I don't know, and here's what. I know this one. Go ahead. No, no, I know. I, I, I... Is there a world where you could let people in on it without telling them? What if instead of 30% of the audience getting it, 80% of the audience gets it the same way the 30 did? Because one little thing. Don't bring math into it. Yeah. The point is, the fuck? Uh, here's what here's what it is. Everything fades. Everything's in the moment. You gotta just appease yourself in that moment. If you worry about the difference between thirty percent of the people getting it and eighty, it's not about worrying, Howie. It's just it's just recognizing why the something more works. more people that well, the, the the wider the bigger the audience, the more homogenized you're going to be. Right. Yes. You know the best. The, the, uh, my favorite comedians and comics don't have the biggest audiences and the biggest, you know, th th just one example that anybody can use. I love Curb Your Enthusiasm. Curb Your Enthusiasm is not watched by 30 million people a week, you know? I think it's a, a million, two million. Okay. Hilarious. I don't know the, the, these stats, but every, I mean, the bubble I live in all loves the show. Because you're in the world of comedy. Can I just say something? If you go, I, you know, up until COVID, I was doing 200 dates a year. The, uh, the average housewife in Ames, Iowa, is not watching Curb Your Enthusiasm and then waiting with bated breath for the new season to start. There's a difference between not watching it versus watching it and not enjoying it. Right. And when when you, 100 percent of your audience is watching you, and if you are trying to be weird or awkward because that is the point, as opposed to that's just. Uh, uh, happen, that just happens to happen. So what I'm saying is that- but That's what, it just happens to happen. Listen, when I come here, I don't want to wait around. No. I don't want to plan. Uh -huh. I just don't want to. I don't like it. I get bored by it. It's yeah. really hard. I have really bad ADHD. Yeah. If my producers sit me down and go with Rick Glassman and here are the stats and this is what he wants to talk about, I would fade out. Yeah. You oh. know, I know who you are. I know the things that I've watched. I know that I, uh, you know, the things that I've loved. I'm getting to know you in the in next in the last ten minutes much more than I ever have, which is interesting to me. But I don't I don't want to do any prep. So if it's uncomfortable starting that on camera, if if coming in and sitting down and talking about what you want to talk yeah. about or how we're going to set up, if that's uncomfortable, 
So be it. Oh, it's real. But that's that. Um, that's what I'm saying. That's the same thing. Just because I'm uncomfortable or nervous doesn't mean it's wrong or bad. I subscribe to that entirely. Oh what happened? What? What's that? So um, this is the B12. I was going to offer you what Jackie's getting. It's an immune booster IV drip. And then do, do the B12 on a shot. Kind of. But no, I'm not going to. B12, really? B12 on the house for me. Yeah. I anyone, took a B12 spray. You're very kind. Yeah. B12? You've I ever took had a, a B12? B12 tongue spray. Oh, okay. This it's morning. Very kind. Can you overdose on B12? Well, the tongue spray is only like maybe 75, 80% absorption because they get lost in the GI tract. But this is like, <laughs> you can skip your dose tomorrow on the next day, but maybe just call me and we'll talk later you know, if you don't <laughs> want to do it today. Yesterday, okay. Howie. You're going to call it? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yesterday, Howie, I, I went uh, went to a garage sale. Move the mic closer. Yesterday, to you. I went to a garage sale, <laughs> yeah. and today, I'm the proud owner of a new garage. I think the B12 <laughs> shot that she's giving you is a shot. So this okay. is a shot, and then that? I'm gonna do uh, in the arm right here. Okay. Really? Why are we doing so much stuff? I was just trying to get you hydrated. Well, I'm he getting, wants he wants B12. What? How do you feel? Have you had B12 what? before? Do you feel good? I've had B12 a lot. They, okay. I've usually got it in the ass. Relax your arm. Yeah, we could do I've boot. taken it in the oh, ass. Relax your, you relax your <laughs> arm, Dad. Oh, are you, why, why are you talking about the shot? I'm why fighting. You your dad's wrestling me right ass. now. I've had it be shot in my ass, too, yeah. Why in the ass? Hmm? Why in the asshole area? It's a um, muscle. Yeah, but... This needs a trigger warning for anyone that doesn't like shots. Oh, your arms, shots look, and stuff. Your arms look good. I didn't Thank know you. that you... That yeah. you had that. Yeah. You uh, work out. Uh, no, no, I haven't been working out lately, but I, Hi, I, you're to, I didn't know that, that you were a strong guy like that. You look good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, uh, Wait, he's allowed always... to get all this? Even B12 when... helps uh, reproduce red blood cells, so it's really good for energy. And it I just want to make sure because he has yeah. AFib. And... But, but I do have AFib, but the problem is... You shouldn't be something... drinking so much coffee then, too. Are yeah, you, you do coffee? drink a lot of coffee. I drink a lot of coffee. Well, so do I. It's going to kill me. But when I'm dead, I'm going to be awake. So... Uh, I don't know what I'm thinking lately. I really don't know what Who I'm does? thinking yeah, lately. I've been thinking in some weird, odd, very strange accent, so I can't really make out a lot of my thoughts. Uh, well, when it comes clear to you, let us know. Do you do a lot of plant, not just like producing and stuff like we talked about? Do you do a lot of planning before your podcast? Like questions that you want to ask and all that stuff? Uh, I have questions that I want to ask. Um, it depends on the guest. I would love to have you on, Howie. Uh, if you ever on. came on, um, I wouldn't need to prepare anything. I have so many questions and interests and thoughts. When it's somebody, so let I, me know when I'm I, when you have me on. Let me you give me a day because I like to prepare. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, want, otherwise, um, I think some of some Olympia? questions. Do you want biotin? What no more. Do? I think we're done. What is that? Hair do? Skin, I don't want anything. Hair skin and nails. No, we're done. Do you want hair vitamin C in, or zinc in your? You're giving me something for my hair. <laughs> I thought it, I thought I could just offer, um, but you could do what Jackie has is uh, zinc, vitamin C, and glutathione. Mm. Wait, you gave me all those? Yeah, this is what you have. This is for like it's really good bleeding. for immune, like before traveling or around a lot of people. It's like I'm not an immune booster. Okay. You know, I read. Are you nervous now that you have all this in you? <laughs> I read the other this day. This was your idea. I know. I thought we were just. I gave you minimal it. dosage. Howie, okay. I read the other day that 40, <laughs> I think we're good. 40 billionaires are giving away <laughs> half their wealth. Yeah. 40 billion. Did you read that? No. That's a couple of billion bucks right there. It's a very uh, Jay Leno delivery. Did you hear about this? No. No. Did you hear about this? No. A couple of billion bucks a year. No, a couple of million. A couple of million. Oh. That's a couple of million bucks right there. <laughs> Was that an impression? Of Jay Leno, I'm of me doing, doing well. Jay Leno. And it's always. No, you but could, his impression. Was that Jay Leno or was that. Were you doing an impression of Lou, who you thought sounded like Jay Leno? He thought I, that the I was setup doing, was yes, Jay Leno. Uh, the, the cadence was Jay Leno. Did you which hear is about this? Good Did you hear about this? Special. The cadence is Jay Leno. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, well, I have. I Jay love Leno's that the impressionist just has the cadence. I have the cadence, but I'm. I remind out? people. Sign up for the this. Bloomberg Wealth Report. How oh, billionaires? Yeah, there it is. Away Forty money. billionaires giving away half their wealth, and I'm saying to you, that's got to be a couple of million bucks right there. He's right. Uh, to answer your question, Jackie. Um, Jackie. <laughs> to answer your question, my girlfriend helps uh, with questions for people that I, I'm not. I don't know that well, okay. so she has these list of questions that I always put next to me. Wait, is she, you work with your girlfriend? She helps produce my podcast. Yeah, isn't it That's weird nice. working with people that you love? <laughs> no. Yes. What does she do for? Yes. Life? She's a creative director. Where? She, 
Uh, she lives in the UK. She's real. <laughs> she lives in the- uh, you, you wouldn't know her though. She lives in London, but she's real. And she lives and in London. Is your girlfriend? Yeah. How do you have a relationship of, with a woman in London? Explain that to me, Batman. We we fly uh, <laughs> anti-Semitic. We fly uh, back and forth. That's that was right. a joke about just ending a last That's name right, in man. And I, I think it was too far away. <laughs> uh, we fly. We fly. No, but how did you meet a girl in the Ukraine? Same way I've met anybody I've ever dated since I was 20 is online. Oh, so really? How long have you been going out with her? A little over two years. Wow. A little like over in, two years today, actually. Does she have a British accent? An app? Should we call her for your... Uh... She's probably asleep eight does, hours does ahead. Does she have a British accent? Rick Glassman is dating now. Who are you dating? It's a 37-year-old. It says single. You haven't changed your... Uh... I don't do that. You don't do what? I don't do this. I don't put this stuff in. Who and dubbed I, it? This I is, don't know. It's your website. It says updated by No, Rick. it's not his. What? That's not Who the way it? the internet works, Dad. It's not his know. website. Someone else put up information. You know, I've him. memorized... How much time have you spent for, with this person in the last two years? Like in person? Half. You spent oh, a did year you together? quarantine with her? I was in London. Boy, mm-hmm. my was retired. And I flew back. Uh-huh. And then she was had a ticket to fly with me. This was in March of 2020. She was coming a week or so later. And when I landed a few days later, the quarantine started. Mm-hmm. So she wasn't able to come. And... Uh, it's not the first girlfriend. <laughs> and uh, I didn't see her for almost eight months. That was room for you guys. You didn't. There you go. <laughs> you know, I've memorized every every uh, letter of the alphabet in chronological order. It's sort of the way I try to do things, you know? You didn't finish, did you? That's it, baby. <laughs> What, do you, what does that one mean? Sort of like, I've, I've memorized every letter it's of the alphabet. It's a premature ejaculation. In chronological order. Chronological order. Numerically. Letters of the alphabet. I have memorized. Aren't they in, 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 no, in they're, chronological they're, they're order? In alphabetical order. Well, but chronologically, too. A came first. That's where they put it there. Well, no. no the a came alphabet first. Is no, alphabetically, alphabetical, alphabetically is a QWRT, whatever, the keyboard. A keyboard is alphabetical. No, alphabetical no. is A, a first, B, fo- C, then followed by D. That's yeah. chronological. No, no, that's chronological is first. Well, I got a question. Third. What's the third letter of the alphabet? C. Chronological. Right. That's what I've done. I'm what's telling the, you what I've in, done. In, put put the letters in alphabetical order. How, what, it's what, the what, keyboard. Is no. chronal is is alphabetical. No, no, no. no. And what also, do you guys think? I've memorized every <laughs> number. <laughs> 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 Who are you talking to? I'm googling. To? The people at home. Get I've me memorized. some fucking comments. <laughs> You're welcome. She's, uh, she's I've memorized comments. every number from one to forty-two million eight hundred in alphabetical and sixty-three. Order. You give me any number, any fucking number you want, and I'll tell you the one that comes before it and after it. That fast. Try it. Seventeen. I got no fucking time for this. <laughs> did she? <laughs> what did is that? A come first in the alphabet? That's what you Googled? Obviously, A comes first. People ask. <laughs> I had to Google it to make sure. Caroline's Caroline is Googling, confused. does A come first in the alphabet? No, the, uh, but isn't chronological? Uh, is numeric- I was just taking numerical? the joke literally because that's my brand. No, I know. You don't have to. Saying it's your brand is off brand. It's no, a very brain. me thing to do. Mm. Did you say brand or brain? Brand. brand. Oh, that's my brain. <laughs> Why is the only one wearing headsets the one that didn't hear? <laughs> Howie, it's your daughter. You know, if there was yeah. no ice, would there be capades? Because I, I think capades. 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 I, I think capades. <laughs> If you look at the word capades, <laughs> it only exists when you say ice in front of it. You know Nobody int- ever used that word capades or trapeze, for that matter, outside of a circus or when they're performing on, on frozen water. I always thought it was I scapades. I scapades. Yes. <laughs> and if we go together, we scapades. Ah. <laughs> I do have a joke, though, that is why do they call the Heimlich maneuver a maneuver as if there's so many other Heimlichs? Right. I know what that maneuver And also, we don't have time to say the whole thing. Right. Just the Heimlich. I love that. I, you know, you know. I, I used to talk about Heimlich is what? I think it, Heimlich is the person who, like, the so narcissistic. I, I don't know. I the... save this person, and anytime anyone saves it, that's my IP. It's always <laughs> like that in a medical. I said I met his daughter, and I went to, I used to talk about going to the prom with Mr. Heimlich's daughter. Did you really Lisa. talk about that? Yeah. Yes. We slow danced. She was always, like, hugging me from behind, and <laughs> there were little pieces of carrots on everybody else. You know, I did, it was part of a <laughs> sketch show one time and and i wrote a, a a recurring piece which is my favorite thing to do things coming back a few minutes afterward where they the different attempts at the heimlich maneuver so first it was a guy running head first into a guy's stomach another one drop kicking him until they came up with the actual maneuver the it was like an experimental uh, thing heimlich. 
Heimlich came up with it. It's a good it. SNL sketch yeah, it's to meet Heimlich. Do you That's know if you're doing great CPR, great you're, you're you. supposed to... Hugs and everybody's just shooting food out all over the place. He loves meeting people at dinner parties. Yes. Are you, oh, <laughs> you ever see somebody cough? Are you always looking? <laughs> it's a funny bit. Do you know if you're doing uh, CPR, you're supposed to sing Staying Alive when you're doing it? You know, mm-hmm. you sing it or it's, I know the That's tempo. True. Well, she's a, a, me- a medical professional. Ask, yeah, ask it's 100, 120 tempo. beats per minute. Yeah. So let's do it. Speak. Uh, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, uh. Staying alive, staying alive. You say that as uh, somebody's lying there dying? Or my dad sings my flag it, that. staying in line. When he's standing in line, he goes, standing in line, standing in line. So you could do it for CPR or standing in line. I miss yeah. my dog. You sure this is an opportunity of a lifetime, Rick? What? Free. Uh, I, I, I do want to. I've made my decision. I'm not going to. Do you to. want an antibody test? No, I take I'm, I'm okay. okay. I take these. I miss my dogs. Test? I'm you sorry. Don't dogs. <laughs> hmm? You don't have dogs. I think there's a better question you can ask. Yeah, seriously, Howie. <laughs> don't you know the rules? I miss my dogs. <laughs> Where did they go? I miss my dogs. How much do you miss them? He's looking How for. much do you miss them? How many fucking dogs do you have, Lou? I miss oh. my dogs. How many dogs do you have? Two cats. <laughs> Howie, Howie? <laughs> Yes. Howie. You're when just I, learning my name now? It's just a thing. It's a cadence thing that I've learned. You brand. Know, it's it brings brand. people in. It's your, brand. it's your brand. Yes. I have a brand. I know. There's your brand. Let's see. What is that? Let me see that. It's, it's a hat I have, and we're back. I like it. I cut to a lot of colonoscopies, and then we come back. That's very nice. I love that. I would love I, to see. Jeremy, I hope you're listening, because we're getting a... Uh, a lot of tips. Even merch ideas. Yeah, you should sell glasses. I do. He does. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> is it a brand of glasses or is it merch? See, I wear. It's not merch. Uh, these are like uh, all my glasses I wear are from a brand. Or like a C at C I wear. C S E E I wear. And those ones are na- they're all named after like. Yeah. This is the this is named after her son. This one. This is the I'm, Axel. Heimlich. Axel. Oh, Axel. interesting. Jewish, right? I am Jewish. Axel. Are you Jewish? Are you Jewish? Thank Howie? you. Yes. No, but I thought you were. Uh, 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 so you were bar mitzvah. Yeah. Okay. I opened with my what Hatora. did you think? I thought because you were on what? that show. I thought you said you're you're Jewish and Italian, half Jewish, half Italian. No, no, but I think in the stand up act that you saw, mm-hmm. I did a half and half joke. Right, you were doing. Where I do half and half, half, half and half. One's a mother, one's a father, one's a male, and the, oh, yeah. that was just to set up the joke. You lied. lied. Not a lie. You Isn't lied. that what your grandmother used to call you when she first heard yeah, you? Yeah, she didn't something. know the difference between joking and lying. Liar. Joke. She goes, you're a liar. <laughs> Two guys walked into a bar. No, they didn't. You're a liar. <laughs> Nobody walked in and you weren't there. I go, it's a joke. No, it's a lie. You have to lie. always tell me the truth. I go, well, then I do struggle with that on stage sometimes. I have a very difficult time with lies. But if there's an intention behind it where I'm not mm-hmm. trying to manipulate you to the truth versus just the feeling you have for the setup. You're uh, overanalyzing what you do, man. You just but it's really it. good. You just do it. It's funny because it's so opposite. We just had Jezelnik in who says that everything he says on stage isn't Everything true, I say right? on stage is Nothing. a lie. Nothing he says is true. That's fine if if uh, you're fine with that. Right. I get very uncomfortable with it. No, I get very uncomfortable with lies. Because you under, you, you're you seeing comedy but as... But you just said that, the, that you're half Italian, half Jewish. That was a lie. It wasn't half Italian, half Jewish. It was half black, half white. Right. Uh, and also and it's 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 the the point is because you find something that's a little bit believable and then you keep going but then when i say i'm half my mom's a woman and my father's a man so technically i'm half man half woman you're not lying it's no. just it's the point of it is deconstructing i mean this is whatever right. the point of it is to deconstruct something so i'm not telling the lie the thing exists look people just want to eat the food they don't give a fuck what you did to make it just yeah they do my do- my wife is gluten free yeah see what i'm saying <laughs> no, so, so if you see me it. if you see m- me walking down the street and my head is slightly tilted at around a 30 degree angle and i'm walking down the street with my head slightly tilted around 30 degrees like this i'm thinking Remind me of my son a little bit. Is good. It? good. Are you That's lying? A, that that he reminds me of my son? No. What's your son's name? I don't have him yet. No. Oh. But <laughs> that's the reason. <laughs> See? That's the reason. That's how you walk into a joke. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. How many dogs do you have? <laughs> Jewish? <laughs> Is she Jewish, the girl from England? Uh, religiously, no, but everything else, yes. She's just neurotic. <laughs> um... Uh, she, uh, uh, 
No. No. Do people ever mistake you for Josh Groban? I had him on my podcast. Really? And uh, we, opened it, we opened uh, it with him sitting in my chair That's and me right. in his you chair. You look like Josh Groban. It just occurred that. to me right now. Very yeah. good. Well, Not, it didn't occur to you when I said it? No. Well, at the moment you said it. But I'm only getting like a side view of Who Rick. does he look like I don't, from the side? Inside, I don't look like Josh. And I no. get, believe me, read the comments. You don't look like Josh from the side. Right. What, what were the comments? Dude, does it look like Josh from the side? <laughs> really? No. <laughs> no, look, look, he looks exactly like Josh. Oh, you do? Did you ever? He doesn't show his side. He always, he, he hates a profile. Oh, there, there we go. Is. As you said that. Guy. Yeah, there's a profile. <laughs> <laughs> she typed in Josh Are you going to marry side. this girl? Probably. Yeah? Yeah. So let's call you her want, and right now. Do you want like a family and kids and everything? Yeah. I did. Yeah. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> you know, I used to be part of a gang. I How used to be you? in a gang. She's 37. 37. Yeah. Today. Happy today? Birthday, yeah. buddy. No, no happy way. I'm saying today. I'm 30. I'm 37 today. Uh, oh. my birthday. Oh. <laughs> you know, I, I used to be in a gang. Yeah. Years ago, I was in a gang. Yeah. And and every Wednesday morning, we had a meeting at eight o'clock, and that's one of the main reasons why I left. Yeah, he's not good in the morning. I think I'm really. I was hydrated. in the afternoon. You think you're hydrated? Like really? I have to pee. <laughs> <laughs> I can uh, walk you to the bathroom. Go. You go. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, just do we have, like, can we bring a steady? One. Can we bring a cam? <laughs> we'll, we'll, really? we'll cut, we'll cut call her. bathroom breaks. You want to take your microphone off though in the bathroom, though, right? I don't. You're you wearing a microphone. Oh, okay. Don't come with I me. I won't go. No, no, you go with her. No, so we don't can hear. come in the. Bathroom. As long as it's we can you hear know. You talking. Howie, have you ever done jury duty? <laughs> yeah, but not in court. Oh, I did it once, and I pleaded not guilty. How many times did you do it? <laughs> no, that was the How many the dogs do you oh. have? See what he was doing? Yeah. <laughs> right. I was. I always. Deep. I always feel like I'm getting into something. I, like jacket. the way I feel right now. Yeah. I feel so good right now. <laughs> so that's good. Why do you feel so good? And I'm the one on the IV. <laughs> Just it, keep right? this above your heart. I don't yes. know. Maybe good. maybe you're projecting it well. <laughs> I know. I the laughter that people and hear. I'll there's just, no camera. If you get stuck on something, I'll be next to you. Oh, yeah. Like outside the door. <laughs> you can listen that's to why them. you put your headphones on? If you get stuck on something, I'll be next to you. Oh, they're videotaping her in the bathroom. <laughs> Howie, I want a comic to go on stage. And when Simon says, go tell me, you, cut him off. I, Say, Simon, let him do I his fucking you act. Could turn his oh, mic oh, down. Oh, turn their mic down okay, for a minute. Um, there we go. Yeah, okay. I want you to... Uh, when a comedian comes on stage and if somebody asks them a question, cut them off and say, let them do the fact. Let them do it. What do you think about that? Well, in theory, that's sometimes how I feel. But I'm hoping that, you know, being in season now 17 is coming up. It's television. I know what you're going to say. That It's amazing to me that all these people that say, this is my shot, this is what I, how many times have you watched the show, and especially as somebody who is a, um, uh, a monologist, who is up there to create a, a story and to create a moment, I'm amazed at how they don't, and it's not even at the point where they, um, where they're talking at the beginning, but how they don't make the whole thing their performance. Yeah, it's like they stop and they, they get into character and go as opposed to it being there Even the, the fact that, like, if I was going on, I would have something prepared if yeah. somebody hit the red buzzer. You know what I mean? Rather than just being, and I'm not knocking anybody that's thrown by it, but as a comedian, I think you should do your home. That is a possibility. Yeah. And just like you have a possibility when you walk into a club of somebody heckling you, yeah. you know, you should be prepared for that. And if it's not going well, you should be prepared for that. And I, I think one of the I'm best things- I'm always prepared for that. I wasn't prepared for your comment. The, 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 the best example of that was uh, Taylor Tomlinson was on, and I think it was going a little rough in the moment. And then he locked on the Heidi and made it all about him and Heidi mm. and went all the way to the finals. Okay, you can turn her mic back T up. Taylor Williamson. Taylor, 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 I'm sorry. Yes. Taylor, Taylor Williamson. Right. I'm sorry. And he used the fact of when a joke didn't go, he commented on that. I don't like when, like even in clubs, if somebody just has an act and something enormous is happening in the room or not know. happening in the room, there's no comment on that. And that bothers me. Yeah, you got to acknowledge I take it back. I don't think you should cut anybody off because I think that. Uh, I love it. I think that the, uh, the, you're right. And that the comedian 
should have the opportunity to either cut him off or answer in the way they want. You're right. And I um, also I feel I also don't. feel like, you know, as a comedian, you're going to come out and they're going to talk to you. If you want to play a character and give bullshit answers and do that, then that's on you. I want to go on your show so bad. All right. You know, I'm going to change the world. But then I can't have this out. I'm going to change the mm. world. Oh. No, no, no. You won't say what you're doing, but you can go on the show. This I'm going to change the world one country at a time. Okay. What did I miss? Nothing. <laughs> no, I think she's talking about his Maybe joke. Maybe you missed the toilet. Were you hovering? I think no. you guys need a hook on your door. Yeah, she, had to, hold, she had to hold the bag <laughs> while I was peeing. A uh, hook. I was just kidding. Oh. <laughs> Oh, you hold the you oh. held the bag while she was peeing. Yeah, because it had to stay above. You're my, a good friend. Because it works for gravity, you know, so it's got to be up raised. Speaking of gravity, you know, Josh Groban works with Sarah Bareilles often. It's their song, "Gravity." Is it? Yeah. 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 I thought that was John Mayer. That he is John Mayer. It, yeah. What am I thinking about with uh, with Sarah Bareilles? What's the word, the song I'm thinking of? She Sarah sings Bell. "Sitting on the Dock of the Bay." A re, a <laughs> that's cover. not. That's a read. I know a the cover. Waitress, the, yeah, waitress. Yeah. I saw a waitress Jason with her. Is on that. Look up uh, Sarah Bareilles' song. Uh, her the, the, it's a one word. It's a one word thing. It's not gravity. It's gravity not gravity. Is John right. Mayer. That's John Mayer. Does your husband work with Sarah Bareilles too? What's the song? Uh, they're she... friends. I don't they kind of know, know who that is. Who's Sarah oh, Bareilles? She's amazing. Oh, she's an amazing singer. Well, I know that. What's a Sarah Bareilles? She used song? to be mine. Is one, is one of my favorites. What's her? Here it is. They're gonna play one. I think. Here we are on Spotify. We're gonna play it. Sarah Bareilles. No, Borellis. Borellis. It sounds like a part of the brain. Type in Sarah Borellis gravity. It's not gravity. No, it's not. The, the love song. The love song, song is no, the she biggest does one. Have gravity. Oh, she does. Where do you see it? Yeah, yeah. yeah she does a great. We're going to hear it. it now. Is it? Is it the John Mayer song? Are you allowed to do this? You can get flagged. What, you don't so care. I, I don't care. We're so fucking. We don't obsessed care. With you just don't monetize, yeah. right? Well, and it's still up there. Yeah. Hmm. I, I'm, not, I'm not doing this for the money. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> this is not. Are you playing it? No, it's not working. Uh, it's okay. Or maybe gravity. Just it's a sucked. different. It's a different thing. But now I'm having a hard time connecting to it. Oh, you hear it? No, no, no. I'm saying the John Mayer gravity is a different gravity. Are you snoring, Lou? No, I'm I just, heard you snoring. No, I'm not snoring. What I what I oh, want to. You know that old. The, oh, Keep it from here. Keep me without you. Oh, yeah, this is beautiful. No, play from there. It's coming up. No, come on. You're going. Keep going till we're totally demonetized. I can only do five seconds. Right. That's what I was talking about. Uh, I'd say go to 112. Wait. Oh, never... I do know that song. Well, just let him sing it without her. So <laughs> She's so good. Going. I do know I'm that song. Singer. I like that song a lot. Yeah, oh, yeah. she's so good. She's Daniel, to uh, Natasha's. Hey, you know that, what about that song? What? My, my husband is a pianist, musical director, composer. He he just got off tour with Jason Mraz. He's worked with Natalia Lafricade, cool. Ziggy Marley. You know that old saying? He got where... a Grammy for Ziggy Marley, right? Yeah, he was yeah. on one. He... And he wrote the theme song to her company. Remember that? The YBL? <laughs> the YBL. Listen to this. Listen. We can play this and not pay for it. Listen to this. He wrote it for this podcast. For this podcast <laughs> about Natasha's oh, cool. company. Yeah. Ready? And it's him singing also. Beautiful. Oh, there. It's beautiful. Timing is everything. Oh, here it comes. Here would be an example, by the way, Howie, where I would jump cut from now to the music starting. See, because it'll make it look slicker. I'm not slick. I love that I'm waiting but for it. But your glasses are. And a loving, well, yeah, these are Axel glasses, her son. It's named after you, her son. You know son. that old saying where where you you find a piece of used gum mm. and chew it and all day long you'll be like a billionaire? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> that one is. That's not true. It's not true. Now, on your podcast, would you edit that out? No, no, no. I, I, would, I would take all of his other punchlines out and dub that one over it. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you do this on the podcast because I saw you on Bert Kreischer's podcast, but that was actually funny. You didn't like what you were doing and you told him how to edit it and he edited that freeze frame with you talking under it. Well, speaking of which, I actually would like to cut to a sponsor. We'll be back, back with a word from Marshall Rug Gallery. I'm going to send it to you guys. Your best life could ask for more. We'll send the nurse just to open the door. <laughs> The enemy of my seven seven three zero seven three four YBL. Wow. 
Uh, is he doing like a Dracula <laughs> thing? A Dracula voice a little bit? He, no, he's Israeli. Oh. He's Israeli. <laughs> I love that you always get I Israelis and Dracula. Thing. What's the difference? I yeah. thought it was very appropriate Blah, for Halloween. I want up. to suck your hummus. <laughs> <laughs> he said, open the door. Whoa. And I said, okay, it's it's perfect for Halloween coming up. It kind of sounds like Jason Siegel's character in Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Yeah, you know what I'm talking right. about? Yeah, when you, I have, love do you know, him. No, yeah. When he's playing oh, the piano. I have a crush on him. I love him. Did you tell Does your husband no? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you have a hall pass? A hall pass. No. 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 She's looking for a badge. <laughs> She's looking for a hall pass. <laughs> she just thought to go out in the hall. I have here. a badge? No, a hall pass means You have a hall pass when you when you're dating? Oh, oh no. I if think. if I was dating somebody that was okay with me fucking somebody else, I would just be out. Mm, think about that. We again. do S T D tests too. I would revisit we do that. <laughs> We do STD testing too. Hey, <laughs> hey, the 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 enemy of my enemy is Harold. Do you have a hall pass? No, you just no, said no. I, 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 oh, I don't like when oh, you're dating. Do you give uh, Alex a hall pass, Jackie? No. If you did, um, we had a comic on. <laughs> never mind. We just had a, a comic. Who on. was it that said that? I was thinking about. That. I love that. That was a funny line. The hall pass was. Uh, yeah, I was thinking the about girl, that. The girl at Applebee's. Yeah. Yeah. At least the, if I you're gonna have joke. a hall pass, you might as well. I've seen it on TV. Was he? Uh, was he? Oh, it's uh, AGT. AGT. It was on it must have been show. an AGT yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, I think my podcast. Yeah, I like that joke. Me too. I've tried it. It kills. Yeah. <laughs> have you had that issue where people have? Uh, yeah. Done stuff that you know they saw you and they took it. I, uh, that I know. No, I, be, I. I. It's. It seems like it, but I also know that there's. There's. You know, 18 jokes in the world, and it's bound to be somebody has something similar but that's kind of like music i always think about that whenever someone's saying hey they took my song or it sounds so much like this i mean i'm sure that people whether they heard it and then it's just like in their subconscious and they think they came up with it or they really happen to come up with a similar joke to you like that same, yeah. there is a zeitgeist there is a a right so you can come up with the same joke i think it happens with comics all the time fortunately mine are hard to duplicate yeah. 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 Today, just so you know, today I got my fingers crossed. I applied to go to Harvard and just keep your fingers crossed for me. Yeah. You know what I is think that, you know I th I think I figured it out. I think I figured it where where the disconnect is. <laughs> you have excellent setups. Yeah. Excellent setups. But I just don't think you finished them yet. No, probably not. That's, I'm working on it. I know. Like, this is a work in Why front. does everything, like, where, where, what school of thought do you come from that everything has to have a punchline? Right. What the fuck's the matter with you? Let people use their own imaginations. <laughs> That's right. I went to the Rolling what Stones. What the fuck did you just say to me? No. <laughs> <laughs> you went to the Stone Show? I did. What? But I love how, uh, you know, like everybody knows all the words and then he goes, all right, do you want to sing? And really, I didn't. You know, I went there. <laughs> I paid big money to hear Wait, wait, sing. wait. He asked, who asked if you want to sing? <laughs> Mick Jagger. That's not you. Not him personally. No, he's oh, in, in Yeah, I went to see it. Oh. Your husband. In <laughs> wow, you went from American to Israeli just with a one vowel. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> Did they look old, How Did they look old up there? Yeah, but he was amazing. 78 years old. He yeah. was running back and forth on that stage. But a lot of time, you know, I can't get no. And then you, he yeah. holds the mic out and satisfaction. I think about that too. It's like, I, I want to hear him do it. Right. But, yeah. but I thought I was inspired. Now, th th in my comedy act, I'm going to do that. You For, guys feel free. Yeah. Two guys walk into a bar and then just hold the mic out. and let Two them guys walk into a bar. <laughs> you know, no, but I want them to come up I with don't a punchline. I don't want to think of anything. I don't want to ruin this for you, but Mick is wearing Ooh. diapers. No, he's not. Yes, he is. No, he's not. Yes, he is. That's the setup. No setup. That's a fact. Some oh. things are just facts. You like to deal in truth. I deal in true facts. That's a true fact that he pisses himself three times during a concert. We can send a nurse on set. Yeah, <laughs> which, send Natasha. Which, which nurse company would we call? Ghostbusters. <laughs> which nurse company would we YBL. call? YBL. And oh. if you call well, and say Howie Wowie, you can get ten percent off. Oh, really? She just came up. With really? Only really? ten percent off. Here is the. Remember this number. You get a slot. Could ask for more. Send a nurse. Just open the door. One, oh, 
Howie wowie. Howie wowie. You got it. <laughs> Wait, like pot? That's what the Howie wowie. No, that's Maui wowie. Oh, Maui. <laughs> Isn't that's where the four seasons are? I didn't know about are. that. What? You know Maui wowie? In, yes. in the, Hawaii. My dad insists we watch Up in Smoke every, once a year. Do you do you smoke pot? Uh, I don't anymore because it hurts my throat, but I eat it. Boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> when you're eating, uh, don't you burn your tongue? I I. Throw it back there. Wait, you know, what? I bought a I bought a five dollar umbrella once at the dollar store, and it, it worked better than anything that that is not an umbrella. Is that where you got you got your idea for an umbrella in a jar? These things they they sort of evolve. Umbrella in a can was inspired by the five dollar umbrella at the dollar store. Yeah, it's yes, good. Yes. I've never heard of an umbrella. And I want to write a new ad. his idea that he What do you want to plug? You want to plug? Uh, well, obviously, we've talked about your, uh, the podcast is amazing. Thank you. Um, his dad's carpet store. Marshall Rog, we threw the commercial. We'll throw the commercial in. Oh, your dad has a carpet store? Yeah. yeah. I didn't listen did to that. Plug for his father's <laughs> you know that I was in the carpet business. I didn't know that. I had, uh, I had uh, uh, three or four stores in Toronto, Canada, and Hamilton. What, three Toronto. or four? You don't remember? Oh, can I just say something? I saw. I wanted to say this to you because I saw your special where you were the Italian guy in the men's room. Yeah, Ita so fucking funny, Thank you. and that character was so well done. Thank you. And every time you jumped up over the 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 edge of the, the yeah. stall, the, can you do that character? Because that is so. I don't even know what you're talking oh, about. The Italian guy. I I played a bathroom attendant. But it was brilliant. It Thank was you. so well done. Thank you. I and don't I don't think. Have you seen this? I haven't. Seen you this. have to see this. What special is it's this? It's so. I don't know. What's it from? It's from my special. No, oh. it's from your special. What you, special? I don't know. You did a, a comedy sketch special, and that was one of the sketches where you played a bathroom attendant, and. Uh, oh, uh, sunny skies. Sunny but Skies, look Italian it up and put character. it up. Uh, sunny Skies. Oh, it's, and it's you know who's in that? It's That's what Stephen First is in that scene. I'd like to watch it. As, any, as good as any great acting you're going to see. No. Is, yes. Well, I don't know if it's great You're acting. wrong. But what were we talking about? Well, your, uh, we your three though. or four rug stores in Toronto and Chesapeake. Yeah. Well, did you work in the carpet business at all? Oh, I worked for my, my dad. Yeah. Uh, every summer in college. I, I, I know nothing about carpet. I'm colorblind. But <laughs> you I know that. I, I, but I sold this? like a, what? Oh, yeah. Well, I, listen, it's a little bit corny and not everybody's looking for this, but unfortunately, or our, our, our business at Marshall Rug Gallery, we don't have customers. We no. have family. So that's Marshall Carpet One and Rug Gallery. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> I love that. I do want to say, though. You get the logo and everything from Oh, I have a have commercial. A, we'll oh, do you have a, it, Did your dad do a commercial? So I, before I had advertisers, I would always cut to my dad's local. I, I do the voiceover for this, just this 15 and 30 second spot just in Cleveland, right? Look up Marshall's. Let's put up the commercial. No, no, wait, I'm sending it to you. We got it. We'll, we'll take care of it. In post. Okay. We got to take care voice. of it. You could do voiceover. But I used to cut to my dad's rug store commercial all the time. Yeah. Uh, and then it kind of became a thing. So then I ended up filming a commercial as a joke for my podcast. And people liked it so much, they started airing it, like, on actual television. And it's me, because I'm in sweatpants and doing this. Sh it's great. If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll find thousands of choices, including carpet. Hardwood, rugs, and luxury vinyl. So make the right choice and visit Marshall Carpet One and Rug Gallery. And we promise, with more than 50 years as a family-owned business, we've got you covered! But they already saw it. But uh, uh, so now I've been on every podcast I go on. I get the commercial on. I got it on Marin, Burt Kreischer's podcast, Tiger Belly. I'm going to run it. Yeah. And I and I have a special affinity for carpet because that's where I... You were in the biz. We're getting our IVs removed. This now. is probably the most painful part is because you have hair. Congrats. So it's like no, a Kelly Rick, Clarkson. Uh, <laughs> so that's the Biotin Forte you gave him. Yeah. I probably won't see you again, Rick, so I want to give you my card. Thank you. Why won't you see me again? He doesn't oh, want to touch. He doesn't want to touch. I like that. Yeah. 
Um, I did want to say, though, that we have been... I can do that 51 more times. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, guys. Four. <laughs> we have been getting a bunch of submissions, too. Um, comments from people. I know we asked last time for people to write in and email in any suggestions they have or any comments they have. So we did get a lot. I have them but here. But they should put them on the reviews. It's better for us. Yeah, right? I was going to say that to Caroline and Alex. It's better that we get more reviews on Apple Podcasts or wherever they leave a review. So instead of emailing them nice. next time, if you want to say something or make a suggestion for the podcast, write it Good in idea. the review and we will get to it and say it on air. But I did want to point out a couple of them. There was Matthew Wasson who said that he loves the chips and he wants you to bring the chips back, Lou. Maddie baby. <laughs> yeah. He also had a suggestion. I'll get some chips. I will. And Kayla too had a suggestion that we do um, prank phone calls. <laughs> oh, that would be fun. Wanna do one? Yeah, I'll get a bag yeah. of chips. Okay. We also had someone which I don't know if we want to play it today or we could save it for another time. Kayla yeah. did a prank call herself. She did a video of her pranking her boss oh, with a big up. cockroach. So oh, let's, let's do that. Let's show it. Yeah. Here it is. This is, oh, wow. That's Kayla. And she has a cockroach. Yeah. That, is that her boss? I guess so. She's picking her nose. Yeah, she got her picking her nose. So we met a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Kayla is looking for work. If anybody out there has uh, an opportunity for Kayla. Yeah, she got uh, fired. K-E-L-I. Oh, wait. I don't know if that's public. <laughs> yes. Never Kayla. mind. Yeah, I was just Kayla. letting you know That's spell. great. Thank you, Kayla. We yeah. love that kind of stuff. So if there's more submissions, I guess videos and stuff could be submitted via email. Um, if you have videos or, or audio of you doing pranks and stuff. But any of these other comments, I know we got a lot even wishing you well from like Matthew Wasson, Miles, Tim Brooke. Shirley Butler and Sherry Levy that wish you well oh, after passed you out. passed out. So, yes, and I'm also gonna... make sure to submit to the website, not their email. No, 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 no. We're doing it on Apple iTunes. Apple I iTunes oh, review. Yes, but if you want to submit a video, then go oh. to HowieMandel.com. Oh, submit a video, HowieMandel.com. Got yeah, it. Thank, thank you. you. Do we have some ideas? Do you have ideas, Caroline, that have already well, been... Just call a random store. In the yeah, we will, but she usually has... They do work. Do you have it set up to where they could hear everyone? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you'll have to wear your headsets, and I plug in to hear. Yeah, you you just you figure out the if the prank thing's going because. Okay. Hold on, I've got a few. She's got a few. What? I've got. Tell Daniel. I've that got she some. Hold out. on, I gotta pull well, my. I got a spot this <laughs> Sunday at the Flappers. Remember, I had my fingers crossed last week. Yeah. You turn the mic around. Can you? Your mic is facing the wrong you way. Still have crossed <laughs> for Harvard. Oh, I can't wait. Can I can't wait to find out around. if I get in. <laughs> it's in. It's the wrong way. Can somebody turn his mic around? That's something you don't hear on a lot of podcasts, and that's something I never edit out. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. No, I know. And you know how many times per episode his mic is adjusted? <laughs> <laughs> I love the guy who eats chips and is never near the mic. What's I'm going on? Get out now. You're going out? She's oh, taking I can take mine it out. out. Oh, mine's already out. Okay, so did you put up some... Ooh. Did you put up some stuff for us to call? Okay, so I just sent you a number for a laundry mat. A what? A laundry mat, or I have a laundry. Okay, let's call the laundry mat. Okay. <laughs> we can't both do it, so yeah, you can. But yeah, we can, can both watch. We'll both. Okay. Still I'll just bring it. you in. I'll start it, and then you bring it in. Where's the laundry mat? Give me the laundry mat. We're gonna call laundry mat. Should have shaved my arm. Okay. Oh, I can't with it. We can't with the chips with these around. I'm sorry. That's got to stop. Yeah. I can't do it. I can't yeah. do that. I'm actually just got mad. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Are you serious? This poor girlfriend. It's, it's, uh, are you okay with the chewing sounds? No, he's not. You don't listen to ASMR? Uh, they're old stuff. They're old stuff. All right, stop with the chips. Stop look, with look the chips. What's the mic? What's all that all over the mic? I don't know. Sour cream and, uh, and onion. Ugh. 
All right. Whatever we did get a couple of comments about the chips. Yeah. Like we, got a, we got a couple that said they're not listening anymore because of the chips, but I read the couple that said they want more. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> There's no middle ground when they it comes to chips. It's either me or him. They don't understand. <laughs> People don't understand art. That's the problem. I'll tell you Where's something. Where's the dry cleaner? You should sell chips as merch. I texted you the number. Oh, oh well, you got to tell. You can't just text me and not, I'm not checking. I my told text. you that. <laughs> Wait, Here we he, go. Did you hear that? We should sell chips as merch, he said. That's a good idea. Yeah. Where do we get a what? Here we go. Shh. And call him Lace. Here we go. And I'll bring you in. Okay. Yes. Um, can you help me for a second? Is there any way? Know. How fast? How fast is there a turnaround as far as uh, cleaning? What's the fastest? Well, we don't turn? have a drop off service right now. What What do you, you mean? Have to come. Well, are you looking to drop it off? You mean you want to drop off your clothes? Okay. So here's. Or you want to come in and do it yourself? Oh, all right. So here's what uh, we don't have a we don't have a um, fluff and fold. This is just do it yourself. I know, but here's what I want to say. I have um, okay. I have these. So pants. one wash, uh, the wash, the wash usually lasts about twenty six minutes. But here's what I want to ask: Is okay. there any way? Because I have nothing to do with your equipment. I have uh, clothes that are they're soaked in blood. And what I need is after the wash, when I leave, I need the entire, the dryer and the washer disinfected. Um, hmm. And I also, if somebody, if the police or whoever, if you guys are getting questioned or called, how can I keep that a secret so that you don't divulge any information? <laughs> is this a joke? Um, it, it is, uh, ma'am. This is far from a joke. No. Well, then why would I want to, why would I not, I mean, I'm not like evading you with freaking washing some bloody clothes. No, we, you, you just said we'll do it. I have, my buddy Rick is with me here. He's going to be doing the washing and the laundry. Okay, and okay. Just... Seven, stop it. Uh, uh, yes, he's joking. Uh, yeah, well, yes, we do have bloody stuff. It's not from, obviously, you're not going to call the police or anything, but it is a little uncomfortable coming in with some bloody stuff. Our dog recently passed away giving, um, giving birth to her puppies and it's a she was okay with the you murder took it. she was okay with, she was murder, okay with murder. murder i was trying to make it seem more real yeah and people don't like real people don't <laughs> respond to real there's a, she'll talk to me about a murder and how she's going to divulge to the police but as soon as you said you had birthing puppies I, oh i'm fucking out of here i think she, i am not going to deal with puppy shit <laughs> but I, if you are a i serial, think she i think she was out on the uh uh, uh, uh you okay no oh i'm so sorry <laughs> that's why i don't ask you never ask no. I know, it's a terrible question. <laughs> well, if you want more of those, what we call medium prank phone calls, tune in next week when we have Kayla coming on to talk about her crickets. <laughs> My name's Rick Glassman from the Take Your Shoes Off podcast, and here is part two. Theme music. Theme music. We're out. Thank you.